and then the very first word from 24 is not in Luke, so I'll put that from Matthew only. Therefore, and then whosoever is from both. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them versus whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings. So comes to me is first. Hears these sayings of mine and does them. In Matthew, there's no and. That's because it's the first thing mentioned. It's just hears these sayings of mine and does them. Luke, however, it says, whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, and twice, which is kind of annoying to me, but I'll just leave it. Hears my sayings or these sayings of mine. I'm going to go with the way it says in Matthew. More words, just to be all inclusive. These sayings of mine. These sayings from both of mine. These sayings of mine and does them. And does them is both. I will show you to whom he is like. Matthew says, I will liken him to a wise man. Liken might be a more simplified word than show you to whom he is like. Yeah, you know, I've, I've gone with the majority of words for a few verses until now. Like, here's these sayings of mine instead of just my sayings. Now, I am leaning towards just the word liken instead of will show you to whom he is like. It's a lot more words. Because in Luke, it pretty much repeats a few words. I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house. It repeats itself. That's really annoying. But they're both in Luke. If it was from Matthew and Luke, I could easily just put it once. But since they're both from Luke, I feel a little bit worse about cutting one of those out. But I have the option of just saying like in Matthew, so I'm going to go with that. And the words he is like is still there, since they are there twice in Luke, so you're not really missing out. I will liken him. No, I can't do that, because if I say I will liken him, I'd have to follow with how it says in Matthew, to a wise man. Instead of just, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep. If I want to put both of these words, I'd have to say, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a wise man which built a house. Yeah. I have to go with all the words. This one really annoyed me. So I'll say, I will is both. And then instead of liken, which would have been so much simpler, show you to whom... He is like, he is like a wise man. I could put wise in there for Matthew. But to a, to whom he is like. The word to is both, so I'll put that. A wise man. So a is both, wise is Matthew only, and man is both which built his house upon a rock, or which built a house and dig deep. Which built is both a house or his house. His house is a house, but it's more explanation. So I'll go with Matthew only, his house. Built his house or built a house? I want to go with his again, just like earlier with the wise man. You know, come to think of it, the difference between building a house and building his house is that, like I said earlier, his house is a house, which means I'm cutting out a bunch of possibilities that he could have been building a house for someone else. He could be a very foolish house builder, contract worker, building houses for everyone, building everyone's house upon the sand. <laughs> So, you know, I think I'm actually going to go with a house instead of just his house. 
because when you're building a house, that could be an example of you doing or saying something without proof, without proper resources, without proper diligence. But if you're just saying his house, it seems to draw it in to less and less applicable truths, where it's just your actual house. So I'm gonna go with A for both, Luke only. Mostly because I want to be able to include all the possible implications. I don't want to narrow this down and, and reduce the meaning of this parable. And digs deep. And then the rest of the words, and laid the foundations. That's all from Luke only. So I'll leave that yellow. Just the words, upon a rock, are next in Matthew. The last words in Luke are on a rock. So I could put upon, which is better, upon a rock or on a rock? Upon a rock. I'll say upon, but the up part is only in Matthew, so that'll be red, but I'll say that the word itself is from both. This is different from changing the tenses, because that would be changing the word, but this is the same word, and it just has a bit more lettering in one gospel than another. If you just add an S to an end to make it plural, or if you add an ed to a word to make it past tense. That is different. But to say on or upon, it's the same. There's no difference in tense, there's no difference in plurality. So that's why I feel that words like upon or into and to, I can say that word is in the same position from two different gospels. Upon a rock. I'm not gonna say that the part of the word up is only from Matthew. I'm just gonna say that the word upon and on are that phrase from Matthew, E, F, and G from Matthew. Therefore, whosoever comes to me and hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a wise man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundations upon a rock. 